When two objects are pressed into contact, they generate a contact stress field. Today, we will explore what the stresses are under contact pressure. Now, we generally look at well-defined contact between well-defined geometries of the contacting body, but there's lots of interesting contact problems. This is a video from Tiedemann Instruments that shows the photoelastic effect to illustrate how contact stresses grow in a simple example of a wrench on a geometric shape. You can see that as you apply load to it, the contact stresses increase. Which way do you think they are trying to move the wrench in order to generate those contact stresses? There are lots of good classic contact stress examples as well, including rolling contact. Bearings on a shaft are another good example of rolling contact. We have already mentioned that when two bodies with curved surfaces are pressed together, initial contact starts as a point, and then that contact grows into an area. This is illustrated in a nice drawing from Wikipedia where a sphere is pushed into a surface and you can see that the surface elastically deforms under the influence of the sphere and creates a contact area that has a radius denoted by a. The way you can understand that is just imagine a bunch of springs sticking up from a surface and as you press the hemisphere into those springs, you engage more and more springs the further you press the hemisphere in. And the peak force will be at the center of contact because the spring at the center of contact will have deformed by the greatest amount. Now this theory was developed by Hertz and so it is given the name Hertzian contact stress. I did a quick CAD of a sphere and a steel plate so that I could illustrate to you what the heck is going on when we push that sphere into the plate. And so let's just give it a quick look after I engage a slice plane and I'm going to run the animation so you can see what happens as we take the sphere and push it into the plate. Here you go. You can see the stress is developing at the contacting interface. And you can also see if you exaggerate the deformation, how we increase the contact area as shown here. So if we have two spheres of diameter D1 and D2 that we are pushing together with force F along the Z axis, the contact grows as the force increases and that contact radius, which is denoted by A, varies with the cube root of this in here, which includes the applied force and the elastic properties of the two spheres that are being pressed together. The pressure distribution in there is parabolic, as you can see, with the maximum pressure at the center. And this is consistent with what we showed earlier when we were pressing a ball into a plate and imagine replacing the plate with a parallel array of springs. So that maximum pressure that is experienced at the contact area is three times the applied force divided by two pi a squared. So we're looking at twice the cross-sectional area for a radius a or a complete contact patch with 2a. That's an important number to keep in mind. If we look at this contact patch, it becomes a complicated three-dimensional stress state. And the contact stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, so they are in the x and y directions. If you go back to this, you will see that the y direction is here, the z direction is here, so the x direction is out of the page. And so it makes total sense that the stress in the x and the y directions within the contact patch would be the same. So the x and the y directed stresses are giving, given by this equation right here where it is parameterized by the maximum pressure that occurs at the center of contact of the two contacting bodies. And it varies with depth Z into the body. And that Z depth is normalized by the contact radius A. So these are pretty complicated equations that also include Poisson's ratio. The sigma three stress points in the Z direction. It is minus the maximum pressure divided by one plus Z squared over a squared. So all of these stresses are compressive. Where do we get plastic deformation in the contact patch? 
from Moore's circle, the maximum shear stress is going to be given by differences in principal stresses. And so we can plot those as a function of distance from the contact surface in the z direction. So we're going from the contact into the body of interest. We plot sigma 1 and sigma 2. That's sigma x and sigma y. They are the same. You can see that they have an exponential decay to zero as we move away from the contact patch. The stress in the z direction is highest at the surface, a decrease as we move into the contact. But if we look at more circle, that generates a maximum shear stress at a distance below the surface. It turns out that if the Poisson's ratio is 0.3, the maximum shear stress is 0.3 times the maximum contact pressure, and it occurs at a depth almost equal to half the contact. So if we go back to that drawing of the two contacting spheres, the maximum shear stress is below the surface. And so initiation of plastic deformation occurs on a plane below the surface. And this is what's responsible for contact fatigue. Fatigue cracks initiate below the surface and then slowly make their way up to the surface. And that generates a bunch of spalls of material that fall off and generate then pits in the material surface. These are some photographic images. This upper one is showing two races that ball bearings were rolling on. And over time, what happened is you get these pits that form that you can imagine ruined the smooth rolling contact between the ball bearing and the race. And that's a failed bearing. If you section and look below the surface, you find that if the surface is up here, you get these cracks that form below the surface. They have this shape such that they turn up towards the surface. Once they reach the surface, a chunk of material spalls off, and that leaves all these pits behind that ruin the rolling contact surface. So that's a, a mechanistic explanation based upon the maximum shear stress that occurs below the surface brought about by contact stresses. Now, if we push two cylinders together instead of two spheres, so now we have these diameters D2 and D1, but they have a length that runs back along the X direction. And so that length is L, their diameters D1 and D2. Instead of a contact circle, you generate a contact rectangle of width 2B times the length of the cylinders that are in contact. Roller bearings are cylindrical contacts. The pressure distribution is again this parabolic. They keep calling it elliptical because it's symmetric about the y-axis. Contact is in the xy plane, but that contact patch magnitude now instead of being a cube root, it's a square root of an elastic term with diameters and the applied load F divided by the contact length L, that's the length of the cylinders that are in contact. The maximum pressure is given by equation 374. Again, we can identify the stresses in the plane of contact, the X and Y stresses, and then the stress Z that is below the surface of contact going into the contacting body, one or the other, it doesn't matter which one. They have these equations 375 through 377. Once you have found the maximum pressure, you can find sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. And once you have those, you can determine the maximum shear stress, which has a value for a Poisson's ratio of about 0.3. The maximum shear stress is about 0.3 times the maximum pressure at a depth of now a little over three quarters of the contact patch radius B. So we, again, we have a maximum shear stress below the surface. So the failure mechanism, again, will be driven by that shear stress below the surface, which then makes its way to the surface and creates a contact pit.